never, ever used the word baptism and they never, ever baptised children. Never. Certainly not infants. Now, it might surprise you, or we've said it, but I've said that Mithraism didn't do it either. And of course, Mithraism had its own word for its ceremony of being bathed in blood and being welcomed to the community. And it wasn't baptism. It was a word that is still crucial today in the celebration of the embers of Mithraism, considering the religion is no longer called Mithraism, it's called something else. And here's the word Nisan. N-I-S-A-N, Nisan. From Nisag in Sumerian, which is the first fruits, the first month, the beginning. And it is Nisan was the beginning ceremony. It was a ceremony of being welcomed into the faith. And it was, because of that history, connected to the fertility, connected to the sacrifice for good seasons, connected to ancient ceremonies that go back thousands of years, albeit a corruption of those in creating a new mythology, Mithraism, you know, coming from a rock, from the most sacred rock in the world. We know it today as the Dome of the Rock. You know, Mithra, the, the, the most important temple in the world, created in 500 BCE by some wicked priests who did a deal with the Persians to create this new worldwide religion, corrupting Zoroastrianism and corrupting their own history. So Nisan is the word that they use. Not baptism, Nisan. And it was always adults, always adults, because it was an act of free will. It was an act of consent. Now, I think I've laboured it long enough, but, but I'm, I, a reason I have raised this because it is central to their system. It is central to the control and because I have enormous respect for each and every one of you and each and every one who will listen to this call that we are brought up in certain beliefs that it's not good enough just to launch in there. You've got to be very sensitive, very conscious and give the context that I had to give you that context. So what is this word? Baptism. And what is its significance to the anointing or the, or the ceremony concerning infants, which is unique, peculiar, and abhorrent to the history of all faiths and all religions of the world that never, ever did this to infants. It always gave people the opportunity at the age of reason to, to choose. Well, the word baptism comes from the Latin, contrary to all what is uh, described about it comes from a constructed Latin word, baptismo. And surprise, surprise, it is made up of four, four Latin roots. Well, one, in fact, having an Egyptian connection. And the word itself is quite late in its meaning. Late as in as late as the 14th and 15th century. The first word is bar. The A is missing. Bar is one of the oldest words in history for soul. Bar is soul. An intrinsic part of the Egyptian mythology. The second word, which is missing its O, is apto, meaning to fit, put on, adapt, prepare, equip. The third word is is, for this reason. And the fourth word is mo, short for mole, short for molech or moloch, otherwise known as the God to whom, the Semitic God to whom small infants were sacrificed, the God of fire, the God worshipped by the Tophet, the God of the Holocaust, otherwise known in other labels as Satan, the devil. So when we combine these together, ba, apto, is mo. Ba, apto, is mo. Ba, apto, is mo. Baptismo is soul adapted or prepared for the reason of Moloch. In other words, a soul prepared for Moloch. 
Baptism is the sacrifice of the soul and the flesh to Moloch. And if you look at the doctrine, the twisted, contorted doctrine of baptism, when a child is baptized, the flesh is considered to have have been sacrificed. That we, uh, we celebrate in contorted terms the concept uh, that we uh, have been mortified and that this is a blessing that we have died to the church that we have given ourselves to the church now if you want to talk about what they claim to do with the soul it's salvation salvage and that is what's behind baptism it is the center of their twisted contorted world and it has nothing to do with the wisdom and civilization of previous messages. It has everything to do with their magic and their rituals and their stupidity of the universe, their lack of knowledge. It is all about control. Now, why is this relevant again to the court? It's relevant to the court because the ritual of baptism was conveyed to the state not to an individual in the state, to the state. The state apparatus, when health was set up and the concept of registrar was set up, meant that every single infant born into a democracy from demos, kratos, every single child born into that system was sacrificed to Moloch. Because the ceremony performed by the church is not called the sacrament, it's called a blessing. I hide the fact that it is not a second baptism. You can't baptize twice. The sacrament of baptism was conveyed to the system. And every baby is baptized as proven by the birth certificate. So under that, they claim the ultimate guardianship. Under that, they claim the ultimate custodian. And even though the courts have no idea where it comes from, that is the source of their power. And it's why they absolutely will not give it up. Well, how do we sort it out? The life on record proves the annulment of their ritual. On their own laws alone, the ritual of baptism should be annulled. Absolutely should be annulled. We did not partake in it. We did not condone it. We did not agree to it. They did not tell us what it was. They concealed information from us. On all those points, fraudism, it should be annulled and voided. But we need a little bit more, a little bit more knowledge so we know exactly how to deal with with these actors in the court? Well, null is a straightforward word from nullus. The other word that we use when we're dealing with these kinds of actions is void. I want to deal with void because void is one that we do call on and void is something that they call on. And we're not quite sure, or we th might think we know what void is, but void is actually something they do in the act of baptism. So let's have a look at what we mean by void. Well, the word void is claimed at the late 13th century, again, as unoccupied vacant, an empty vessel, a wide, hollow waste. And then they claim it comes from vocifus, which is a complete ridiculous, and then they say it's related to vacuus, which is just completely wrong. Void comes from two words. Again, our friends of the College of Abbreviators. It comes from voco, ides. So voco, ides gives us uh, void. And voco, ides means literally to summons, call, name of gods, to invite upon the day, ides, of purification, atonement, cancellation. Now, what do we mean by that? It means that avoiding, a void 
is a ritual. It's a ritual that invokes things three times. Its origin is in the three and it has everything to do with the process of atonement. Now remember, when you go to court, you're going to a court under the sacrament of confession. You are going effectively, if you take it from its pure ecclesiastical sense, to perform an act of atonement, whether you realise it or not, whether you choose to or not. That's why you've been invited. You've been invited to come and atone. Because remember, they've already judged you. The tribunal has issued its papers. If you go to a magistrate's court, the clerk in that court is the clerk of the guardians. The paperwork in most cases has already been filled in, already been done. So now we see in this word void, we see voco eyes to call summons upon the, the day of atonement. Well, what's the day of atonement? Well, in the uh, ancient uh, origin of atonement, the day of atonement was uh, the Ides of Nisan, the Ides of what we now call baptism, the day of blood, the day of being baptized in blood. And it was 14 under a moon calendar because the moon corresponds roughly about 14.7 of a day. The afternoon, the evening of the 14th day is roughly when you get a full moon, which was the Ides in the Roman calendar. But of course, under the sun calendar, it's been shifted to 15. But it's still celebrated in its authentic role on the evening of the 14th, and it's called Passover, the Day of Atonement, 14 Nisan. And under the Roman calendar, of course, it became 14th of Mars and later 15th of Mars. Beware the Ides of March. Beware the Day of Atonement. Now, what happens, and, and, and where does this connect to? Because this sounds out there. But let's have a look at a ceremony that happens on the 14th, uh, on the day of, um, uh, day of Atonement. What do we see in terms of a ceremony? we see a, a ceremony occur uh, called Kol Nidre, or Kol Nidri. Before the sun set on the eve of the Day of Atonement, congregation gathers in a synagogue and they establish a procedure based on creating a tribunal. And then they make a repeated uh, pronouncement three times in different parts. And the key element of this, pronounced three times, Kol Nidri is the, Kol, the infamous Kol Nidri prayer. And I'll read you out what they say. This is the essence of the Kol Nidri prayer pronounced every year. All personal vows we are likely to make, all personal oaths and pledges we are likely to take, between this Yom Kippur and the next Yom Kippur, we publicly renounce. Let them, let them all be relinquished and abandoned, null and void, neither firm nor established. Let our personal vows, pledges and oaths be considered neither vows nor pledges nor oaths. So within that ritual, which is a modern ritual, which was never part of the faith of the Yahud, it was never part of Mithraism, uh, it has no historical precedence, it is an absolute aberration, it is a complete heresy, owes its origin to probably no later than the 16th to the 17th century. And Kol Nidri basically says that not a single thing can be believed by anyone that has performed or participated in this ceremony. Not a single thing. If they're sitting on a bench, you cannot believe them. No promise, no oath, no vow, nothing they say is true. They not only are a liar, not only do they follow fraudism, but they are obliged, based on this, to renounce. So there is a void, a ceremony of void, the ritual of three. I'm sorry that the trucks have started up again out there. <laughs> so it's a noise. So we get to the end of the, of the 
power and how do we deal with this? What 